So your small engine won't start, it won't run, and you think it, it's because it doesn't have any spark. I already have a video on my channel. I'll put a little link up here for you in the information button, as well as at the end of this video, I got some clickable thumbnails there for you too. That video is also waiting for you at the end. You did everything up that video, you tested the spark, and there's absolutely definitely no spark coming out of the end of that spark plug. It's not necessarily your spark plug that's at fault. It could be your high tension lead, it could be your ignition module, your coil, it could be some wiring problems in there, it could be your on off switch, but we wanna rule out the spark plug right now, let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. SteveSmallEngineSaloon.com right there. Visit my website when you get a chance. Um, hey, I don't think I've had a Coors Light with you guys yet. Excellent beer. Now, I know this video is going to take longer than one minute, obviously, for me to explain this all to you. But once you actually know all this information that I'm going to show you right now, uh, by the time you take your spark plug out and test this, it shouldn't take you more than a minute to uh, figure out whether your spark plug is the culprit or not. You need a multimeter. Guys, if you don't have a multimeter, man, these things are so inexpensive. I got a link on my description of this video. So you click on that link and you'll go back and you'll see some, some multimeters. They are ridiculously inexpensive. Everybody should have one of these. Couple quick things here for you when we're testing this spark plug first. Uh, when we're testing this, we want to make sure that we're putting that spark plug, laying it down on a non-conductive surface, not a metal surface or anything like that. Put it on a rag, piece of cardboard, something like that, so we're not getting a false reading. Also, when you use your multimeter leads, don't touch the metal parts like that to hold them on there. Um, the multimeter itself is going to read resistance through your body, believe it or not. So make sure that you hold the leads on the insulated parts like that when you're doing this. Now I got this awesome little visual aid here for you from NGK. Um, so we can actually see the inside of a spark plug and I can, I can describe to you a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I'm not getting sponsored or uh, uh, endorsed in any way, shape or form from NGK. So let's just get that out of the way right now. This is just a visual aid that they provided for me. You can see from this pick right here that there's two separate parts to a spark plug. A lot of guys call this the center electrode and the side electrode. So that's what I'm gonna call it. We call it whatever you want. The center electrode goes down through the middle right from where your boot hooks on right there. And it goes right through the middle of your spark plug right down to the point where that uh, spark is coming out. The side electrode is completely separated from that and it's right here where, where the threads are and where your uh, spark plug wrench, your socket fits on right there that is completely insulated from each other. Those two things are insulated from each other by this white part of your spark plug. That is a ceramic piece that is all one piece. It goes right through here like that and it's a solid piece. Now that's very important. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. Now there's two types of spark plugs that you're going to find typically on your small engine equipment. There's a, a non-resistor spark plug and there's a resistor spark plug. We're going to go through both of those right now. We're going to start with uh, this one right here. This is a BM6A. You'll see in the part number there is no R in that. That means it is not a resistor spark plug. So what we want to do right here is turn our uh, multimeter on and we wanna check for conductivity, continuity through the center electrode. How we do that is uh, we're gonna to touch the right where the spark plug boot goes on right here, and then we wanna to touch the other end, right in, that insul right in that ceramic insulation right there, the tip of that, that's your center electrode. We touch that, and you hear that? That's continuity on my multimeter. You touch those leads together like that, it, it reads no resistance, it's just straight continuity through there. 
That's what we want to have on a non-resistor spark plug. Straight continuity. You can see there that there's like no resistance there. That's good. The center electrode on that one is good. Now, what about a resistor spark plug then? Let's try uh, a brand new, this is a brand new BPR6ES. It is a, the, it's almost in every single piece of what your Honda equipment on your lawn and garden equipment, lawnmowers, all that stuff. This is brand new. Now you're gonna see when I do the same thing on this one, um, as, it, oh, by the way, BPR6ES, it's got the R in there, means it's got a resistor in it. Here's how you're gonna see that. Do the same thing. Now look at that. Now we're getting that ohms reading. The ohms reading is that little horseshoe shaped thing right there. Yes, I understand that's the, uh, uh, the omega letter in Greek. It's also, I just call it a horseshoe. It's also the symbol for ohms. You'll see that come up on your multimeter. If you don't have an automatic multimeter, you have the dial on there, make sure for a resistor plug that uh, you have that turned to the ohms, that little horseshoe shaped thing, and check it again. And we should have, this one here is brand new plug, and it's got just under 5,000 ohms of resistance right there. And that's perfect, that's what you wanna have. By the way, when you're doing this, I gotta add this also, when you're actually touching that center electrode right there, make sure that there's not a big piece of carbon or something stuck on there where your, one of your uh, multimeter leads is just stuck on a piece of carbon. Make sure it's metal to metal so you're getting a true reading. If you have to clean the spark plug off with a wire brush and get that carbon out of there, do that first. I know that there's a lot of videos out there that actually guys will say on a resistor spark plug, it needs to be between 4,000 and 6,000 ohms of resistance. If it's past 6,000, then uh, your spark plug is garbage. I got to disagree with that in the small engine industry. That might be true in the automotive industry, but I'm not a car guy. Here's a plug right here that is uh, such a typical plug. It's a BPMR7A. This is on so many different weed eaters and chainsaws out there. BPMR7A, the R's in there, it's a resistor, but I've tried, I got all kinds of equipment. I pulled about four or five plugs out, tried them. I tried a brand new one, and the resistance on those things is about nine or 10,000. See that one right there? 10,000, and I tried a brand new one, and it was about 9,000, something like that. So I have to say that in, in this industry, if you, have, if you check a resistor spark plug and it's, it's around 10, it's probably okay. If it's over 10, I, I've never seen one over 10 unless it's a blown spark plug. If it's over 10,000 ohms of resistance, throw it in the garbage and get yourself a new spark plug. So we tested the center electrode on those spark plugs. On your non-resistor plug, if you're not getting any continuity through that at all, throw it out uh, on the resistor spark plug if it's not getting any continuity or if the ohms range, the resistance is out of spec, get rid of that spark plug too. Now if we go back to this picture right here, the next thing we wanna check after we know that that center uh, electrode's good, we want to check to make sure that there is no conductivity, no continuity between the center electrode and the side electrode. How we do that is we put one side of the multimeter on that tip right there and the other one on the side right here. There should be no conductivity, no continuity at all. Your multimeter should not move one little bit because that ceramic insulator right there is supposed to be completely separating those and insulating those from each other. This is the garbage plug, watch this. I'm gonna put that uh, end of the multimeter right there and push it on here. And look at that, we got some resistance. That multimeter just moved right there. That should not happen. That spark plug is also garbage. The reason for that could possibly be that um, the, the ceramic insulator that's going all the way through here and separating those two, it could be that there's a little hairline crack but in that insulator somewhere, in that ceramic, that's causing the voltage to leak through 
from the center over to the side in, in this area somewhere, anywhere in there, that should not happen. That's a garbage spark plug. So if you just tested all that out right there and you either ruled out that your spark plug actually is faulty, you threw it out and got a new spark plug, excellent. Or maybe you confirm that the spark plug is actually good and it still should be sparking, but it's not, then there's something else wrong with your engine. At least now you can move on. Now, I know that there's a lot of you guys out there who are going to say right about now in the comment section saying, well, why not just take a new spark plug and throw a new spark plug in there and see if it's got spark? Well, yes, you can do that, but I understand that there's a lot of guys out there who don't happen to just have a new spark plug laying around where they can do that. This takes less than a minute to do that, what I just showed you guys. So I hope you like this. I hope you give me that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. And uh, put some comments down. Share this with your friends, as always. And uh, I'm always working hard on the next video. Here she comes anytime soon. Steve out, guys.